Okay, you saw our light experiments, and that was the dark particle, and that was the point particle. Fixed and point. And this is from Don Lincoln at Fermilab. And they had seen these particles, they just didn't realize where they came from, because they smashed things, gigantic things together. But in summary, he says that an extended fixed particle have a fixed size, that big black one. They may have a fuzzy, glowy edge, yes, they absolutely do. The point-like particles are mathematical abstractions with zero size, but even zero size particles have an extended effect due to the effect of the field surrounding them. And that's what happened. We crushed that field and we forced this one to separate from this one. Now, he also makes a statement here somewhere about, well, that's what's the point. Um, well, Cornell also found this neutrino nucleus, the neutrinos, quasi-elastic, and it can form around a 2P2H, which is the two holes and the two particles, the blacks and the whites. And their interactions, they hint at them giving a lot of extra energy past a certain level. And uh, that's what I took away from this. But this goes back again another almost 10 years ago. And then they sort of dropped it because nobody could really do much with it. it they, they weren't getting anywhere because they couldn't see it. Well, we could see it. And I showed it. So I'm hoping we can get somewhere now. And I did get a response back from New York University. They said they would forward it to the researchers. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm, I'm kind of amazed, to be honest with you. It's the first time I've really gotten a response from anybody. So I, I applaud New York University. Thank you very much. So this is Fermilab again. The same thing. I'm saying these particles are actually literally particles that shoot off from the sun and they don't return because they exceed their magnetic field. And I'll show you that. He says yes the space is filled with all these particles. It says empty space isn't empty. He's correct. All right, let me show you the particles leaving the sun and invading the universe, which is any extremely radi radiative source will lose its electrons instead of bringing them back in into their field. You see that? That's exactly what my theory predicts. This is in outer space, and during this experiment, they contacted the guys on Earth who couldn't believe it either. They made this, it made a black hole. It is pushing the dark matter, the dark energy, to the center, and the glowy little particles are going boom, 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 and crushing it into there and actually just pushing it into the center. That's what a, a black hole is. And that was formed in a vacuum chamber in zero gravity in space by the Russians, and they injected in here micron-sized charged particles. Anytime you have charged particles pushing against other charged particles, you get these little glowy spots. Simple as that. Okay, I told you this black holes have been created. There it is. I, I, I've gone through this very deeply, so I'm not going to get too deep in it now, but that is a black hole. Okay, let me explain something to you. Whenever anything spins in space, it is spinning through a soup of particles. And what particles are there? Just these type. Just right here. Well, hold on. <laughs> Okay, this is really going to require a smidge of thought, very little. Do you see this? This is the moon. It's eclipsing the disk of the sun. So, what do we see is the radiance of the sun, but we don't have to see the sun itself. Otherwise, you'd never see this. You'd never see this. That's what the beauty of an eclipse is. Now, what do we see? Well, I see a hell of a lot of radiance all over. Is there any difference in this radiance? Well, yes, there is. Some of it's coming straight down, and some of it's going straight up, and some of it's going straight out to the sides. And why are these little very clear-looking lines, and these are real blurry-looking lines? And what's this red spots doing here? And how come no red spots here? Let's take one thing at a time. This is the axis that the sun is literally spinning on its axis, creating a magnetic field. Just like the earth does, and I'll show you some unbelievable shots of magnetic fields in a minute. And we on the earth have a magnetic field that goes out, wraps around, and comes back in. 
This is not the case with the sun or any extremely luminous body because it's losing its particles. They're so energetic, when they go out and get emitted, they just keep going. That's the light that pours onto us and fills the universe. These are the quantum foam particles that Don Lincoln is talking about. So, here we have the axis of the sun. It's spinning because anything spinning makes a magnetic field. Because this is all magnetic particles. It's nothing more than taking a motor and spinning it inside of a magnetic field creating electricity. There's magnets in a, in a motor, or a magnetic field is created. Then you have other magnetic particles in here that push and shove against those magnetic particles. That's what a motor is made out of. And this is nothing more than a motor, because here's our magnetic particles spinning. This is nothing more, the sun is nothing more than a big ball of the same particles, identical same particles. So are we. So is everything. Therefore, anything that spins in a field of electrons, which everything is a field of electrons, that's called the ether, it always was, spins, it will create a, a, a field. The sun is so reactive that it's losing its field. It's just shedding all the way off. And the reason this is red, 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 and no red, red, red over here, is it's spinning this direction. That means additional interaction between its particles that it's holding on to into the particles it's sweeping into. So there's more push to shove. This is the push and they're shoving back as we push against them. This one here is just letting it trail back. But it's still trailing out and not coming home. These little puppies, these little piggies went home, went, didn't go home. None of them did. Alright, well, let's see what happens on Earth. Our little piggies come home. And global warming is caused because our little piggies come home. We scrub. This is 2,700 degrees out here in the ionosphere because this is where our gases end and scrub these particles. Our field doesn't go away. If it went away, that'd be fine. It's not going to go away. It wraps around and comes back in. Our little piggies come home. That's global warming. It's the scrub. It's the push to shove. And that's why the sun, same thing, 10,000 on the surface, millions, millions in the corona. Why? It's scrubbing through there. And we're all being ripped through the arm of the galaxy, plus we're spinning around in circles and twisting on our axis, and there's a lot of interaction, a lot of scrub, but our piggies come home. Okay, you see this? Everything is a dipole. Everything's made of dipoles. That's, that, that is, I believe, Venus, and the reason is it has a double field, and I can explain that because Venus spins backwards, so it has two interactions, <laughs> very, very, and it's energetic and hotter than hell, which is exactly the signature of this extreme glow. Now, this is the moon, and the moon has no field. The moon has no magnetic field. You see all these overlapping fields overlapped on the top of it? You know why the moon has no field? And all these other ones are, are dipoles? This is not a dipole. This is interacting going forward. So the concussion zone up here is the blue creating a, a concussed light wave. This is the trailing coming off this way. So everything's moving. In, well, the moon is moving in this direction, it appears to me. However, there is no spin to the moon, so it creates no field. If you don't spin, if you just move through and there's no spin, there's no field. But everything will spin because of its interaction with the other particles. When they're, we are held to the moon by an extreme lock, which doesn't allow the moon to spin by itself. And I can show you another one here that proves it quite well, that that is not uh, is it? No, wait a minute. This is it right here. You see that? That's not the, the moon's field. There's no field there. That's the overlap of this field impressing itself on the moon. Now, the moon does have some kind of activity going on here. I'm not sure what. Or it could just simply be because of the concussion here. But there's other things out here that I absolutely cannot explain. However, I can explain the fact that there is nothing but dipoles. 
When they spin, they create a dipole. If they don't spin, they don't really create a dipole. And that's why the sun, I mean, the uh, moon doesn't spin. That's not its own field. All of our fields go out and they come back in. So this is, I think, probably uh, a planet behind here, whatever. It's making its own field and coming back. Now the sun, as you saw, instead of its little piggies go and they don't come home. These little piggies go and they come back. That's why we're overheating. It's not because of carbon in the air. They're missing everything. They have to start to understand dipole electron flood theory. And it only takes a few minutes to understand it. There it is right there. So I'm hoping we can interact. I would, like I say, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I did get a response right almost instantly from New York University that they're going to forward my information to their researchers, which, you know, if I hear back from them, I'm going to be really thrilled. And I, I hope I can work with them. That's all I want to do is make this known so it can be looked into deeper because you're never going to get anywhere trying to stay with the standard model. It's not going to work. It never did work. And if anybody gives it any deep thought, and I really did, trust me, I did seven, uh, in 1970. Uh, I, I just got out of the Army from Nuke, Nike Hercules missiles, and um, I was going to go deeply into this because it was just really starting to get explored. However, the pushback was so incredible, and it still is to this day. And that's why Velikovsky was destroyed, too. That's a whole other issue that I, I want resolved because he was the one in history. He, he, did a, he was absolutely incredible in his research and was crushed. So that I want resolved as well. <laughs> Let's fix everything at once. Why not?